Good day, everyone. Welcome to this month's uh, Midwest Region Character Coach Trainers Zoom meeting. We're going to talk a little bit today about how we transition into and out of seasons year to year and some tips for that from folks who have been doing it. Some of us who've been doing it a long time, others briefly, but we'll talk about how that works, what kind of questions to ask, how do we make this process work for us. Um, right off the top, may I please ask Dave Anderson, if you would uh, pray to kick things off, sir. Sure. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for this time to uh, meet together. And we just thank you for the opportunity to serve the kingdom through our work, through working with the coaches and working with FCA. Lord, we just pray that you'll bless this time, open our hearts and open our minds. And just pray that you'll bless the uh, fellowship and the time that we have together so that we can be more effective for your glory. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, I have a couple of quick things to promotionally talk about here. First of those is this app slash website. If you go to that URL, um, it would get you to this app or the website, and you can um, connect with lots of sports chaplains, character coaches around the world, either from a standpoint of the little message section, actually kind of like social media where you can send messages back and forth. There down at the bottom, there are groups. There's like an FCA group. There's a bunch of other kinds of groups in that thing where you can connect with people either by sport or by geography or what other things. There's an event section that tells you what's coming up related to training or these kind of Zoom meetings, other things like that. Um, the map is phenomenal because it shows you where sports chaplains are all over the world. And let's suppose you had a player going from somewhere in Iowa going to go play a professional soccer, let's say in Germany, you could look on the German map and see if there's any place in that where your player is going and try to connect him or her with a, a chaplain over there. Same way if people come to the States from wherever they are in the world and come to, they may be looking for you as a way to connect. So anyway, that thing is there. Pretty good tool that uh, some friends of ours have developed. Coming up on Monday, on the first uh, Monday in, um, April, I'm sorry, in May, this is going to be a thing we're going to talk about. How do you partner with churches? Um, I slid right by one of the things that's coming up next Monday. We're going to talk about how do you deal wisely with media, sports media. We're going to have a, a long, long time collegiate radio guy on there. We're going to have a, a TV sports anchor from the past. And we're also going to have a very long term um, sports information director who used to be at Illinois State. Now he's at o Oklahoma University, Kenny Mossman. Some of you guys may remember him. Kenny's fantastic, very faithful guy. And anyway, these folks are all going to talk with us about how do we do, how do we deal with media wisely? What are the things to talk about? What are the things to never talk about and stuff like that? So we'll talk about that on that one. Then that one will be about building partnerships with churches. How do you go find the character coaches in churches? What's a good process for that? What is the church value? How do we intersect that? Things of that nature. Talk in uh, May about dealing with our own frailty. I mean, some of our folks have had um, medical issues or other things that have really hindered their ministry short term. How do we deal with that stuff as it, it's very likely to happen to us? How do we manage that stuff? Uh, that's coming up then. And then in early June, we'll be talking about sports chaplaincy character coaching, and academia. How do those things fit together? How does one enhance the other, vice versa? Things of that nature. That's, so that's stuff that's all coming up in the next weeks related to that. And um, here we go. We can stop sharing the screen. All right. Um, let's do something up front here. Um, Justin Raby, how about you introduce yourself to these other guys, and then we'll have them do similarly. Tell yeah. us who you are, where you are, and that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm Justin Raby. Uh, I'm a new full-time FCA staffer uh, as of January um, here in Southern Illinois, about 45 minutes from where Rogers is at, um, serving three counties uh, just north of, of the territory Rogers has been in. So, um, and actually, I, I just met with a guy yesterday um, going through the character coach training. So first one I'm working with, kind of building up and looking to place him somewhere soon. So, Brilliant. Very, very good. Matt Schulte, could you do similarly? Yeah, Matt Schulte, Central Iowa. Um, I have two counties just south and east of Des Moines. 
and uh, only been on staff for about a year and a half. Um, interesting thing for Iowa is we are in Central Iowa talking about developing the training for character coaches because we have a lot of people interested. And so in a couple of weeks, we're all going to get together and using a lot of Roger's stuff, um, kind of gear it toward Iowa people. And then Good. I think eventually it's going to go to the whole state. We're going to train the whole state and kind of have just a standard training for uh, character coaches. So very good, that, very good. That coming up. Outstanding, Dave Anderson. Yeah, I'm uh, kind of like Justin. I'm fairly new. I uh, just became full time in February. I'd worked part time the year previous. I also coach currently, but we're kind of in a transition where we're getting a new head coach. So it'll be up to him whether I stay on or not. So. Um, wow. So we'll see, see how that goes. So um, uh, I'm just trying to learn more. I don't have a lot of experience with what you guys are talking about, but sure, just trying sure. to see where I can implement it. Yep. And where are you located? Oh, I'm sorry. Northwest Illinois. Got it. Okay, good. Near Quad the Quad Cities? cities? Okay, good. Quad Cities, yep. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Very good. You probably know Dan, my boss, Dan Pierce. Very well. Yep. 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 Bob Montgomery, can you open your mic and tell us, tell everybody where you are besides driving in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm actually stationed in central Illinois, just south of Springfield, um, and I'm a, I'm a, a baby part-timer, um, retired coach, but not retired from coaching. So Got I it. am coming back from having spent the last two months being a nanny for my grandson and wow. coaching baseball in Florida. I caught a little Christian school that was down there. So because our season is so completely knocked around yeah it gave me a chance to still coach a little bit and be with my grandson and help my my daughter out and that ended yesterday I went, did my last game with the Florida kids and I'm going to do my first game with the Illinois kids tomorrow so outstanding that's the, that's the patch and as far as the character coach stuff i um, never had any experience with it other than Roger mentioning it and it just little lights and bells flipped in me that said this is something that makes a lot of sense at least with some of the people I know and some of the situations and Nick Rogers got a handle on it so I are we doing it well no but I, I hooked up with a couple guys in Florida when I was down there a couple dads that were assistant coaching and I said you know you might actually enjoy more of this role so I've got some stuff that I sent them we'll see how it goes outstanding Good. Let's jump into the, the primary topic today. Let's talk about trips, tips for transitioning into and then out of seasons. Um, any of you guys who've had any experience at all, tell us what have been some of the best things for you or for those you're, in, you're overseeing for how they start seasons. What's been the best way to uh, enter that process? One of the things um, that the guy that I met with yesterday, one thing we talked about, um, because he probably won't be placed with the team at least until summer, just because the way things are right now, sure. stuff's happening so quickly. But one thing we talked about that may be one of the most important things moving into a season would be getting with the head coach, seeing what their focus is for that year. You know, a lot of teams will have, you know, a word of the week or some kind of a specific focus, and then that can kind of gauge the direction that you go as the character coach towards that particular season. So that was one thing we talked about yesterday. Absolutely. That's really good. Matt or David, any thoughts you have about that? Well, uh, my character coach that I got going this fall started midstream because after sitting through some of your webinars, I figured out this guy that keeps showing up at practice might be a good character coach. So bingo did a quick training and got him signed up and uh, he, he did a great job. So I really didn't do the into part as much as I was training him on the fly. Yeah. And then the craziness at the end of the season, because we made the playoffs and uh, yeah, sorry, Illinois guys, Iowa, we've been playing the whole time, yeah. but uh, he, uh, I mean, we just went right from there and then he actually helps out a lot with their basketball. Um, he does announcing for our home basketball games and stuff. And so, you know, I talked to him briefly, but I really need to have a better, a, a better way to get out of it. But mm -hmm. so th this coming year, I'm going to give him some more ideas on the, how to get into it, Good. which is like, like Justin said, 
Um, we do, we have done a word for the week. Actually, all of us football assistant coaches have, we each get a week during the season and we're supposed oh, to give the team a word for the week and then maybe have our uh, character coach kind of focus on that with the kids and just keep it in their, their brain longer than one day. That's really good. If the more you can get out of that coaching staff as to what they're emphasizing, you bet. Now we can come along and talk in that same language. That's really, really helpful. Yep. What are other kind of questions you might ask a coach preseason to get ready for this, the, the upcoming season? You can brainstorm a little bit. I have some that I have cued in my head all the time. What are the, some things you think it might be prudent to ask a coach preseason to help you shape your service? Just how, how can we help you? You know, what, where are the, the, the weaknesses or the areas you need help with? Yep. You know? Exactly. Coming into this college football season, spring as it was, it was all kind of up in the air. And a lot of the support staff roles were diminished significantly, like fewer student workers, fewer athletic trainers, fewer of the. So part of the thing I knew I could fill was some of those gaps to help just carry stuff or to move equipment or stuff like that. It made easy places for me to jump in and serve because like you said, Dave, you could either observe those or you could ask straight up, where can I serve you? What's maybe going undone that could be where I could help? That's a great question. Other things you're thinking. I think awesome. with it. With an experienced Please. coach, you want to get in with them and really hone into their philosophy of what they want to accomplish. Exactly. You bet. So ask ask them what kind of words are you using for that? What's the language? Is there a phrase or is there something where you're trying to really shape it by that set of ideas? The more you can get from them, that's, that's what I've been doing with teams lately, as I say, coach, can you give me three or four words that you want to have really – be the foundational pillars upon which you build your program? Are there some ideas that are really foundational to the way you want to build this? Then you talk those ideas and I'll talk those ideas and we'll, we'll all be emphasizing the thing, same thing. And often given some time, they can come up with a good list of those things and you can go, coach, this is excellent. Let's build on this. That works pretty well. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll ask even more directly the question of the coach as a coach if you will, help me think about ways I can serve you personally, your coaching staff also, and your team. Many times, especially in the high school level, the coaches are going to think, this guy's here for my players. Well, that's true, but we'll do even better if we can think, serve the coach, head coach first, also the coaching staff, and then maybe thirdly, the players. And that gets us more deeply into the thing than just allowing them to default to you're here for the players. But if I ask a question directly about you, your staff and your players, they go, oh, this is bigger than just a talk with the kids. Exactly. Good. Other thoughts you have preseason wise? Um, one of the things too is being aware of things that have happened in the off season that might resurface. Um, yeah. for, for instance, we had a, a student commit suicide that graduated last year mm. and we had to deal with that right before the boys basketball season started this year. And so heading into the season, they did, they dealt with it. Um, cause he was a member of the team as a, as a senior and, mm. um, and the team went, ended up going on and winning the state title this wow. year. But they had wow. to deal with that. They had to deal with that as the season started. And so, you know, just help navigate through that. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That's where sometimes we are uniquely qualified to stand in that mm -hmm. gap with them. That's good. Sometimes even asking logistical questions of coach, if I only had 30 minutes, three times a week to come to practice, what's the best time of day for me to show up? You know, so is it beginning of the practice? Is it the end of practice coach? If I had 30 minutes, which 30 minutes should I get to? That's a good question to ask. That way you can you can be there at the right time of day and so as to accomplish the most. And the coaches will tell you, well, the way I arrange practice is X, Y, Z. And they, they go, okay, got it. That's a good question to ask, just logistically. Um, ask them if, if you want to do something on game day, what would it be? Is it a pregame talk? Is it a 
chapel? Is it a pray with the guys in the locker room before or after the game or both? What would you like, coach? Because I'd, I'd be thrilled to serve in any way. So asking very direct, clear questions. Preseason can really help set the table for what you're actually going to do. Other thoughts about preseason or coming into the season, that transition? I, mean, <clears throat> I think time frames um, kind of on those pregame talks or, mm -hmm. um, you know, well, we've talked about shooting for two or three minutes less than what the coach allots you for. Yeah. Um, you know, if he wants to give you 10 minutes, you know, we need to know that he wants you to have 10 minutes or if he's going to give you 15, um, you know, that way we, we don't have to ask every week. We just know ahead of time I'm shooting for seven, eight minutes and that's, that's it. Yeah. Good. Good. That's excellent. Great point. In any case, it's, it's really wise to go in with a game plan as opposed to just winging it. This way, the coach knows what to expect from you. You know what to expect from his or her expectations, and you can hit the mark better than if you're just blind and figuring that out as we go along, which happens often, but this is better if we can. And then secondly, coming into future seasons, now you kind of set the table and you can come back, well, coach, you know, we talked postseason last year. How would you like to do things? Is there anything you want to do differently this year? How, what would you like to add or what would you subtract from what we did last year? Think about that. And um, that helps. Now you've got a bit of history in, in the ensuing years. And, but you can always work in light of what was and say, were you happy with that? Or you want to add something? You want to take something away? What would you like, coach? And um, then it's a little easier in, in succeeding years. All right, let's turn the tables and think about how do you transition out of a year? When you get to the end of the season, in one respect, it can either just go like, okay, that's over. What do we do now? Or there are things you can do postseason very purposefully so as to uh, take advantage of this to evaluate and to do things of that nature. Uh, what have you thought about? What have you seen done at the end of a season that could be really helpful in the transition and learning from this uh, his previous season? Well, I think just simply asking coach, coaching and staff, what went well? Mm -hmm. What did you like that we did? What would you like to see done differently moving forward? Yep. Um, in my own case, in the previous two weeks, I had meetings with the head basketball coach at SIU and then with the men's basketball coach. And I had lunch with the women's basketball coach with exactly those questions. What went well? What were you pleased with in our service of your team? Uh, what could be done better, do you think? And then uh, is there anything you would add or subtract from this season in going forward? Um, and any final thoughts that you had? And ask, ask those questions across maybe, I think with Coach Mullins, it might have been a 15-minute meeting with Cindy. It was over lunch, so it took an hour to talk through all those things. But exactly those questions were really, really helpful. Other things you think you would ask about or um, um, anything you would build into a postseason meeting like that? How do you do it with um, you as the area rep with a character coach that, who's not you? Um, take the head coach out of the equation. I mean, mm -hmm. is there something, is there something that us as area reps need to be asking them, you know, away from the head coach. Yep. I, I would ask uh, the, the character coach some of those same questions about what do you perceive that when, if you, have you had a meeting with the head coach to evaluate yet? That's important to do. That's my first thought. Secondly, after that meeting and say, what did the coach tell you about what went well? What it, and so you're asking him to kind of replay what went, what uh, that conversation was like. And then help them interpret what that means. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. To help them understand, okay, I think when he's saying that, well, here's what he wants. Uh, now offer X, whatever that is. Maybe the, um, if he wants to add something, okay, here are three things you might offer, right? And so it's like with these, because of COVID and all the chaos that ensued because of it, uh, it knocked us out of our weekly meetings with uh, the coaching staffs. 
just killed it. It was just boom, dead. Both coaches said, we want to get that back. I said, absolutely good. Let's not wait till the season. Let's see if we can start something in the off season. And so we talked about that. We talked about something to do with the players in the, in the off season. It's one of the other things I talk with them about at the end of the season is, is there anything you would like to accomplish off season before we get to next year? And it could be, depends on what that coach wants. Could be a coach's study. It could be like we're talking with uh, men's basketball about doing something during their kind of break for all of May before they come back in June. Is there something we can do with a series of Zoom meetings or something, have them read something, do some discussions, that kind of stuff. Uh, to keep them engaged even while they're gone. Um, so this would definitely be a difference between high school and college. In some respects, yeah. I, not a whole lot of folks are going to want to do stuff off season in high schools, largely because a lot of the coaches are coaching multiple sports mm -hmm. and they're occupied with the next thing. And so, um, but I would say the, the, the right thing to do is the postseason meeting and then ask your um, character coach some of those same questions. What do you think went well? Um, tell me which of the relationships that you had, which one of those really grew this year? Um, which, which ones among the coaches maybe that somebody's resisting a bit? You could find out maybe there's things going on there, the relational dynamics. Um, and then think, did you talk directly with the coach about serving next season? Because a lot of us would assume that's going to happen. It's that we shouldn't make that assumption. We'd say, did you talk to the coach directly about serving next season? And uh, when would be the right time to, I would ask my character coach, when do you think is the right time to talk to the coach again preseason? How do you put the ball on the tee next season? When's the right time to have that talk? So uh, the, the postseason meeting can both help you evaluate. It can help you uh, kind of set up new things to be done, but it can also help you get a sense of timing about um, when is the right time to re-engage that team, re-engage that coaching staff for the new season. <clears throat> kind of on, I guess, kind of on that same topic, um, talking about high school sports and a lot of the coaches coach multiple sports and mm -hmm. you know, smaller schools, especially in our area, kids carry over from one sport to the next two. Yep. I think it could be one of those good opportunities to see, you know, coaches going from one sport to the next. Would you like me to continue over into whatever the next sport is? Mm -hmm. Um, to, to continue to fill that void, but also to keep a consistency of, you know, not getting a, a new character coach just because it's a different sport, but that same person, same, same coaches, same, you know, athletes, same character coach. Yep. Yep. That can have help. It can, it can be of real value going throughout the school year, right? The whole seasons, season to season. Um, in other places, in certain uh, places, the relationship between the head coach and the character coach may be one that, okay, this is my guy. He, we played high school basketball together. He's my bud. He's in and football has their own guy. Good. But this week, so you may wind up with multiple people just because of relationships. Other times um, it may be, you know, the character coach says I'm a football guy. That's my whole thing. Or I'm a wrestling dude. I'm going to stick with wrestling. Okay. There's room for both. Yeah. And I think there's pluses and minuses each way. Yep. Good. Other thoughts? Almost like doing anything else, starting well is really important. And the earlier you can be um, ahead of the curve and be ready for the launch in a real healthy way, to start well is really, really helpful because that sets the pattern for the rest of the season. But then to finish really well um, with I mean, like here, we're about to play probably our last football game of the season at SIU Saturday. And so I'm going to be writing a bunch of cards to senior players because there's no guarantee all those guys will come back for another season. Some of them will certainly be done. And uh, just to take one more communication angle to try to say, hey, I'm proud of you. I love you. I'm thrilled that you were here. Whatever. Find some way to communicate clearly with those guys is going to be an important thing. And to help us finish well. Um, we're going to finish and whatever, whether we win, whether we lose, whether we make playoffs, whether we don't, to take an extra half an hour in the locker room 
Saturday afternoon is going to be important to hug a bunch of those guys that they're never going to put pads on again, probably. They just don't know that yet. And uh, it's going to be a, an important day. So I'm going to look for ways to finish well. And that's part of that transitioning out. Um, it's probably less volatile in terms of staff turnover in high school sport as it is in collegiate. But often that last game, there's going to be some transition in the coaching staff. And so whatever you think about to finish well, transitioning out of the season, tell them what you want to tell them because you may not get another opportunity. They, they may be gone shortly. So finding ways to communicate by text message, by written cards, by face-to-face -face communication, a phone call, that kind of stuff helps you finish well. Any other thoughts about that whole transitioning out of a season? Well, I was just thinking you need to keep the relationship going, whether they're the player is staying, the coach is staying, whoever, because you never know where they might resurface. Exactly. Yep. My phone is full of former Saluki football coaches who are now scattered out all over the country and just sending them game day text messages uh, throughout the season lets me stay in touch with them a little bit. And then with seeing them once a year at a football coaches convention lets me stay face to face in touch with them. So, but those relationships survive. Some of them are 27 years old now, but we're still friends. We're still in touch. We still have a, a voice in their lives uh, because of that. And that would also be true right where you are in whatever your context. Good. Other thoughts about transitions in or out? I think showing value to those seniors uh, is huge because it's not around the fact that they're a player or an athlete, you know, and that they're not being dismissed. And then it, it teach, it's teaching and modeling to them how they should engage with others as well yep. to show that people are valued regardless of what they have to offer you. Exactly. And in, in one sense, this is, especially in men's sport, this is in, uh, accentuated by some, one of the discussions we had yesterday with Saluki football staff, we'll read a book together. Uh, and it um, talked about issue of fatherlessness. This, this is a pretty good book. Uh, this guy was an NFL player, um, but and now he's a pastor and talks about, but he himself had really busted relationship with his dad. We talked about that related to our players, I'm not trying to affirm to the coaches, hey, the way you speak to those guys, the way you nurture the development as young men, you may be the strongest, maybe the only strong male influence in their lives. That's a big deal for shaping them as men, as husbands, as fathers, as whoever they become in life. Um, and so, as you said, David, those affirmations, that straight ahead talk about who you are as a man, more than a player, more than how productive you are, more than none of that stuff. It's the who you are, I respect you, I'm proud of you, that kind of stuff goes right to their hearts and really makes a difference. Good. Any more thoughts about transitions? Otherwise, we're going to wrap up pretty shortly. Across my career in doing this, I've found new opportunities more from those postseason meetings than anything else to be able to talk with those coaches and say, coach, what went well? What would you like more of? What would you like less of? They'll tell you. And they say, it's funny because Coach Mullins, after I asked him those questions about my service of him, and he, he turns it around, and he goes, well, what did you see in us? He's asking me to evaluate them. And so I said, okay, here's what I saw. Boom, boom, boom. And talked and said, coach, I'm thrilled working with your staff because here's what I see. And man, that was fun. It was fun to be able to affirm him in the way his staff works and the way they're developing their young men and treating them. Um, that only solidifies our, makes our relationships even better. All right, please. I hope I see you next Monday when we do this thing on um, handling media. It's funny because it's all over the map. It could be as simple as like baseball chapel related to uh, baseball ministry. They say it's simple. Don't talk to the media ever. <laughs> that's the way they handle it. If the media asks you a question, say that's the manager, that's the player. Go talk to him. I have nothing to say. 
other people are, it's a little more nuanced than that. I mean, like in my case, I have the long history with some of these sports people. I respect them. I know them and, but I'm not going to become the outlet for a news story. Nope. I'm not going to be the insider of the program. Nope. I'm not going to be the one leaking information. No, no chance. We have to figure out how to do this wisely, maintaining relationships on all sides. It's important. Hey, uh, Justin Raby, would you please pray to wrap things up today, sir? Lord God, thank you for uh, the ability to meet with guys uh, literally all across the, the nation um, to do stuff like this uh, and talk about things that bring such value to sports programs, but, but ultimately to point people towards you uh, because that's what we're here to do. Um, so God, I just thank you for these opportunities. I thank you for Roger's leadership and his experience in this field. Um, and, and I just pray that as each one of us gets done with this meeting and, and any future meetings that we would take away the value where we mm. can implement these things into the lives of the coaches and athletes that we get to serve. And we thank you for all this in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, fellas. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Drive safely, Bob. Thank you. See you so much.